Hello, I'm Brett Moss, and you're watching The Defining Moment for Creating the Culture of Conscience. Our guest today is Ernest Chu. Ernest Chu is the author of the newly released book, Soul Currency. He's a spiritual teacher and an ordained pastor at the Center for Spiritual Living in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and leads workshops on metaphysics of spiritual abundance. Ernie's also an accomplished entrepreneur and a former investment banker and member of the New York Stock Exchange. He was also a staff writer and columnist for the Wall Street Journal. He has two sons, Chris and John. Ernie Chu, welcome back to The Defining Moment. It's really a pleasure for us to welcome you back here to our studio. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Our topic today is creating abundance and fulfillment with the power of love. And I'd like to begin by inviting you to share a defining moment from your own life. Well, my defining moment was when I was a million dollars in debt and I basically uh, went through that dark night of the soul, I would frequently um, experience a lot of fear around the whole issue of, of money. And so one day uh, I went through, uh, happened to be scrounging through my car and um, I had a wonderful experience. I, I thought I could get under the back seat by going through the trunk and so I did and lo and behold there was a whole place where some coins and had fallen through and I, I found a great deal of money. It was a dollar sixty-four and the first thing I did when I found money uh, in those days was to immediately think about my own survival and so I went to the grocery store because I didn't know when the next time I'd be able to, f to get to the grocery store. So uh, in those days I could walk through a grocery store and I had the experience of not being able to afford to buy 98 percent of what I saw. However, there was one thing that I could buy and those were these ramen noodle packages which were at that point about uh, uh, five cents a package. Sometimes on sale they were even less because they were just being introduced at that time. So I lived on that and so here I was. I, I was overjoyed to find $1.64 and uh, I went down to the local independent grocers association there and, and as I was walking in um, I saw there was a homeless lady sitting by the, by the door and, and uh, I thought to myself it's kind of odd because you don't, this was New Jersey and you didn't really see a lot of homeless people. So I figured I'm going to pay her no mind. I just thought I've got my own problems. I felt sorry for her but I just figured hey I haven't eaten either and I now have, I now need to make sure that I can eat for the next week. And so I went in there and uh, that was one of those days where everything was on sale so I got probably double the number of noodles ramen packages that I had and I, I came out with like literally a whole um, bag filled with with food and I still had about 60 cents left over and I was just absolutely like really really flying I mean you think that was uh, that was like a really good day for me and um, <clears throat> when I went to the door and Left, left the store, I had forgotten about the homeless lady and I came almost face to face with her. And I just looked down at her and, and uh, my eyes met her eyes. And somewhere along there I could see how hungry she was. It seemed like time had stopped. And I looked at this lady and I, I didn't say anything. I knew what she wanted. And I just reached into my pocket and I grabbed all the remaining change that was in there and I just put it into her, her hands and then I looked into my bag and I I would have given her the whole bag but I knew I needed part of that for myself so I gave her uh, a, a whole handful of, of my food and I had to then go home and while I was doing that I kind of there was a part of me that said what'd you do you just gave away all your money and you gave away like three days, four days worth of food. What are you, nuts? What would you do that for? And then there was another part of me that said, I just know I did the right thing. I, it was, I, I feel so good about it. And that was that power of love that, that really 
transcendent, that power of fear, that, that power of, of, of selflessness versus the power that, only, that I had within me that only thought of myself and only thought of my own survival. And when I got back up to that one room that I had where literally there was a single bed, I was, it was it's almost like a closet, but I was very grateful to have that because someone had rented it to me, knowing full well that I probably couldn't pay them. So it was virtually a selfless act on their own. Uh, and I got there and I sat down and I thought about everything that happened. It was, it was just so, uh, it was so moving to me that what, what I was experiencing. And finally I could take it no longer and I got down on my knees and I started to cry. And I finally understood that um, I had to surrender, that I, it was just that f clear to me that, that I had really, all my life I had known about God, but I had never really, I had gone to church, I had always thought of it in a more, more informal way, and this became a very personal way. This became something that I really felt in my core, and it had been opened by that act of love that, that, that um, had flowed through me without thinking, just, it just, I just did it. Okay, very touching, very moving. Thank you so much for sharing that. Why are so many dedicated, hardworking people unfulfilled and struggling to make ends meet? Well, I think there are, there are, many, there are, there are a couple of different reasons, but uh, many of these people really are, are looking or don't believe that they're capable of, of having more or they've made a conscious choice at some level to really be satisfied with what they have. And sometimes we settle for life instead of really going for it because we, feel, we see the unknown as something to be feared rather than seeing possibility as something that, that could be great. And so we have a tendency to believe that people who see that are, quote, optimists, which is, a, which is not necessarily a, a good term with some people, but obviously uh, when you create something uh, from a standpoint of optimism, you're creating a vision that you wouldn't have if all you saw was the reasons why you couldn't do it. And so the other thing that most other people have that why they struggle to meet ends meet is that they have what I call um, counterfeit currency. And counterfeit currency is really the false beliefs that you carry with you and that you pass off as real in the same way that you pass off, say, a, a phony $100 bill and you wouldn't pass it off because you know that the feds will be on you in a heartbeat because of the, quote, damage you do to the economy. But how much damage do you do to not only the economy but to yourself and to your self-esteem by continuing to live and pass these stories off as if they're uh, real? For instance, if someone who uh, perhaps was a friend of yours, or maybe you didn't even know them, started telling the same stories to your friends, your loved ones, your associates, and everybody you met that you told, you would be so incensed because you would say, why is this person going around telling all these lies about me? These aren't true. He's make the, he or she is making me look bad because they hate me. Well, you know, you're the one that is telling those stories. And we all do that. but until we become more aware of what these stories are. And you know what? Um, like count counterfeit currency, the dollar bills that people print in their basement or, or uh, <coughs> engrave or whatever they do, uh, these stories probably damage the economy far worse than that. And they, they damage your life. They damage your ability to create good. And they really make you struggle. Tell us about how to transform those counterfeit or false beliefs uh, with the power of love. So another example is one from your book, I'm Not Worthy of Receiving. Well, that stems from I'm not good enough uh, or um, nothing that I do is ever good enough. I mean, those are variations of it. Um, I'm not, uh, the, you, you usually put conditions upon which you have you're willing to receive good. There's some people that no matter what kind of good comes to them, they won't receive it. There are other people that will say, only after I've struggled a long time and I've really 
finally put a major amount of effort in that I will finally get it. We have almost a, um, a national consciousness that struggle is necessary for anything to be worthwhile. So when you look at the power of love in transforming that belief, it's really understanding that it's not you that's doing this. It's not you that is in life. There is something far greater that is animating every cell. In biology, when you take a cell out of, out of, uh, out of context, if you take a single cell and just put it on a, uh, it, it starts to deteriorate. They call it the law of entropy. But what, what happens is that uh, when, when this energy is with you and is constantly being replenished, there's something greater about you. And so to be able to l express the power of love, not only to the outside, but to look within and be able to shine that power of light within, because the power of love is about God. And if God is within each of us, in the cells of each of us, in, in the expression, in the thoughts, What's there not to love? Okay, very interesting. Another f counterfeit belief, I can only succeed if I put a lot of effort into this. Well, that's, that's one of these things that if somebody says to, to you, you know, um, if I really, really wanted something, I always got it. And they say that with a sense of conviction because some people do. They, mm -hmm. they, so the, the natural question is, well, <laughs> Is, is, is your situation now because you didn't really want it and, and you don't really want your good? You'd rather kind of stay in this kind of mediocrity or stay in, in a sense of dissatisfaction? And what it comes down to is it's not related to the amount of effort. It's related to what your thinking is and, and really your, what I call your being. Because you see, being is also an action step. People don't usually think of it that way, but it is. Being is an action step because what happens? You, other actions stem from your being as opposed to necessarily your doing. After all, we're human beings, we're not human doings. We're talking about source ener the, the nature of source energy, which not only expresses that way when it goes through you, but around you and through you and, and, and all connecting everything in life with, with that energy. It is a creative force that basically, when the phone rings, um, <clears throat> and essentially you, you've you've said as an intention that the the day before that, hey, I need to have the phone ring a little bit more because I need more clients or I need to feel like I, my friends are supporting me. All of a sudden, that phone rings, and you'll get things on there that say, hey, I've been thinking of you. I wanted to uh, see how you were doing, or somebody gave me your name, and, and uh, I'm calling you about something, and it may be, it turn out to be something that originally was totally different, but there's a perfection to that whole aspect of things. Okay, so you're talking about intent, the power of intention. The power of intention, and how, how that actually creates things out that seemingly are outside of yourself, but are really reflective of what is already inside. Okay, another counterfeit belief is nothing I do is good enough. Well, we talked a little bit about that in the very beginning because mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the whole feeling that, that um, I'm not worthy or I'm not good enough. And everybody has that to some degree because well-meaning parents have, have really kind of beat that into us that you, you have to earn everything. You have to earn. It's the old Puritan ethic of, you know, you, ha you can't get anything without working hard for it. But what happens is that we've taken it one step beyond and we've said, um, well, I'm not feeling good about myself and so anytime somebody criticizes us about something, you, you immediately go to that story and say, see, I, I, everything I do is just not good enough. I could be perfect. And they'll find the one thing that, that I don't do right and they're going to really harp on it and, and nothing I, could, I do is ever good enough. Poor me. Mm -hmm. Okay, very interesting. And uh, another one, the world, even God, is against me. Well, it all, again, it starts with the idea that God is outside of you and that there is nothing inside of you uh, that, that uh, essentially God is there and therefore God is like the rest of the world 
and in fact, cre and, and since God created the world, God is sort of directing the world, and the, the world's a hostile place because that's what parents have said. And you know what? There's something that says no matter what you believe, you're right. So if you believe that life's a struggle, it's going to show up as a struggle. If you believe that you can't trust anybody, you know, again, a parental, possibly a parental message, that um, it shows a lot of people who you can't trust will show up. And not only that, but what does this say about your relationship with God? You don't trust God either. Okay. And then the last one, uh, my spiritual assets aren't valuable. Well, um, <clears throat> they're not valuable in your mind that most people have uh, taken the, f the, the belief that since these are spiritual gifts, there's the label free attached to it. Uh -huh. and, and that, you know, that how, how, do you, how, do you, how are you able to um, take these spiritual assets and pay your bills with them? Mm -hmm. And we're so attached to that one-to-one -one, that if you press this button that this happens. But <clears throat> what happens is that spirit works very non-linearly, which means that things happen instantaneously. Uh, sometimes it isn't one-to-one, -one, but ultimately there's the, the result that what you are intending to happen happens in a much more eloquent and much more a mysterious way than you ever could have thought. Mm. And so I think that um, this whole idea of not having enough is, is really a driving force that most people have in their consciousness. It's this lack in limitation. The minute they start to look at the flow of soul currency coursing through them and knowing that it's not self or selfless, it's self more, that more being God, then what happens is you no longer have this idea of limiting beliefs that, that there's only a limited number of things. I mean, after all, you know, this culture makes, takes advantage of that. They charge more for a limited edition, right? Mm -hmm. They charge more for reserved seats. They charge more for old things because you can't get them anymore. That type of thing. Okay, good. All right, then shifting gears a little bit. What does the power of love have to do with creating fulfillment and abundance? Well, um, <clears throat> the, the easiest way to look at that are the people who uh, are uh, doing what they love to do. And you know many of these people because the 1%, uh, the 99% the of, of people in this country or in life usually spend a greater part of their lives celebrating the accomplishments of the 1%. Now that's not always, that doesn't have to be true because the 1% were sometimes the people who uh, through their, their journey, ended up doing what they love to do. Okay, very interesting. Tell us about Adventure Prize. Well, Adventure Prize is really that whole flow of, of love interacting in your life so that it's the outpicturing of really um, your dream. And so the adventure is the adventure of life as it shows up in all the things that happen and it's the enterprise of your soul. So that when you dream your dream, you, the dream ultimately starts to dream you. And a perfect example is the Jim Henson again, where, where he started this, this project to make children laugh and so forth, little knowing that he would meet heads of state, little knowing that his company would be worth ultimately $300 million and just there because he loved to laugh and he loved to entertain children. And that's sort of a very classic idea of, of what an adventure prize is. And we all do it on a smaller scale. We, you don't have to have a company. You can invest it in your children. You can invest it in your pets. You can invest it in, in a, an organization like a church or a, an association or, or a PTA or a school. The spiritual entrepreneur who is, it doesn't have to be necessarily, a, again, a, a business person, but it's somebody that is in touch with really their partnership with something far larger. God is their silent partner, and perhaps not so silent. It's only silent because we don't really ask about it. But, but really, in a sense, when you have that greater 
sense of spirit with you, you're never alone. You don't have to do it all by yourself. That's one of the key things. And so in the spirit of Adventure Prize, you actually tap into that flow, which is really been there all the time. You've just never recognized that it was there. And so the Adventure Prize of life is really the life that is a fulfilled life. It's a life that is able to create uh, what your intentions are. But it's also a life that is consciously knowing that there's a greater expression of it through love and through the spirit of God within each of us. I believe that an important thing is far more important than to-do lists are spiritual practices. And if you are one of these people that absolutely has to do a to-do list, then at the top of your to-do list, put your spiritual practices, which are things like prayer and, and meditation, which is essentially just quieting the mind and letting God speak to you. Mm -hmm. And what other practices? Well, I believe that as you uh, begin to express it, you have to express it in ways that are, that are um, contr con contributing to the welfare, well-being and, and welfare of all those people who are stakeholders of your life and of your adventure prize. And so you, in doing so, you, know, you, you really bring your qualities of, of love to that so that you're conducting a business that is, has, is, has integrity to it, that you sell products that are beneficial to to, to many others. You, you do things that you conduct your business you, you, in looking at it, not just as simply you're the boss, but really that you have other partners on the journey with you. And that really you, your job is to not necessarily develop all of them to be all they can, but to really express gratitude and support them in, in creating their own strengths. And Adventure Prize itself will also show you where your own spiritual issues are, because I sometimes think that entrepreneurs start businesses for the wrong reason. They think they're actually going in there actually to make money. And actually, a lot of cases, uh, what shows up in the first probably five days is all their spiritual issues. And if they can overcome those and develop those and put those into, a, into something that is uh, very helpful for them, then they aren't going to get showstoppers, which will put them out of business in, in a year or like 80% of the businesses in five years. Some of these things you never work on, and so they eventually are like a disease. They kill you. Mm. But, uh, but all, overall, this is really like one of the greatest ways by which uh, the power of love can really transform the way you do things, that you're not just doing it for a living, but you're creating a life. And part of it is really understanding that whatever you do, other people have a stake in it. They have a stake. If, if you really knew that millions of people were rooting for success, that they really want this show to be all it could be, that they would really want you to be all that you can be, um, you, would, you would start to become more aware that you have these stakeholders. At every level, there are stakeholders that in your life and not, not just your immediate teachers, but the great unseen number of them in the same way that IBM or Microsoft have literally millions of sh stakeholders. The, the president and CEO isn't going to know all of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, very fascinating. What is the ultimate fulfillment that a person uh, should expect when they undertake an adventure prize? Well, I think that, they, that their life has a sense of purpose, that they are giving love that they are also feeling loved through not first beginning through their own way of looking, uh, of setting love within inside of them, um, but also being able to receive love from all those around you and from your stakeholders. And so once you have a sense of being loved, you also begin to have a sense of purpose and a sense of empowerment and a sense of satisfaction. So that's what actually investing your inner assets to uh, find fulfillment. It's not just simply the investment process. It's the journey that the investment process creates by just setting your intention. So to use the word investment is, is really uh, a very limiting word 
that tells you what you really get, that really doesn't even begin to cover what you get back. So a person who has arrived at that place, there's a sense of peacefulness, a, a sense of trusting uh, the universe around you, the people around you. What are some of the qualities that... that well, as you said, there's, there's a sense of, of inner peace, that you're not constantly fearful about things. There's also a sense of trust, because you're not only trusting those people around you, but you're trusting spirit to, to bring you the right people, that the right to, to really know that when things are in the flow, that they'll continue, they won't stop. We have a sense of lack and limitation that will say, I got lucky, and it's stopping. And then finally, you have a sense of, of joy, of really feeling that life has a meaning. It even at some level you really understand that and at other levels you really can't put your finger on it but it's okay because you don't look at 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 the um, <clears throat> at the logical side of life you you experience life and and the experience of life sometimes can't even be put into words and so this is what we're about that's part of that mystery that attracts people to people who have reached that kind of fulfillment, right? Yeah, the, and they that, feel... That mystery of the joy and the peace and the centeredness. Yes. Something magical about that. Well, it, it's really, ultimately, they deepen their relationship with God. They deepen their relationship with themselves as an as a understanding that there really truly isn't a self. They're, you only experience the self when you're disconnected from God. Um, but the self that is connected is 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 what takes over it becomes you you become one with god in a sense you become one with god you don't see god out there you see you see yourself as that celebration and expression of god and that you know you, there's sometimes the the whole thing about whose will is it well in a very technical standpoint it's god's will but in a, in the other way of looking at it is you know god is within you and god says yes to everything so it is literally your will as well. And the ability to get out of the way to let that will manifest itself. Yes, yes. It's part of the trick. Ideally right? they should be, they, they are and, and should be one and the same. Okay, beautiful. Well, on that note, Ernie Chu, I want to thank you so much for having been our guest today. It's really been fascinating to listen to everything you've had to share. How can our viewers get a hold of your book, Soul Currency? Uh, they can get it at almost any bookstore, Barnes & Noble, Borders, Amazon.com. Um, I would also invite um, them to go to my website, www.soulcurrency.org. Okay. Well, beautiful. Once again, thank you so much for having been our guest. My pleasure. It's really been wonderful having you here. You've been watching The Defining Moment for Creating the Culture of Conscience. You can find us on the internet at www.definingmoment.tv. Thanks for watching and have a great day.